What's up, guys? Action 46 Racing Network back once again. To me, that looks like a Monster Jam thing I would ever seen. Like, this is like Monster Jam or race cars, man. I'm telling you, it's like full blown in your face action. I am so happy Dylan won because I gotta tell you, I don't like him and I don't like Logano because every time the commentary hits, it's like they're in the limelight and they don't quit saying, I don't like getting hit in the rear. That's the most vulnerable thing about them. They don't like getting hit in the back. And of course, out of all people, Austin Dylan answers the call. And I'm like, that is the most wildest thing I've ever seen. And I'm like, I, I'm full blown. <laughs> Listen, it looked like to me, Earnhardt was driving a three car. That, that's what I looked at. It looks like Earnhardt was driving a three car and he went after Logano like full boogie tail. He didn't give a shit because his, what are the chances? I want to be, I want to be thorough here. What are the chances that Austin Dillon might be retiring next season? I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna let you guys know, because you guys probably don't know this, but Austin Dillon might be, it, this might be it for Austin Dillon after this season, because I heard commentary that his sponsor might take a walk, uh, Bass Pro, because it, it, people should understand, okay, because. Fans are sick and tired of seeing Austin, uh, people are sick and tired of seeing Joey Logano and Denny Hammond take the limelight, like, and they curse out the fans, and they're like, oh, we're good with people. Yeah, you're good with people off the, off the track, but what about on the track? Like, I'm serious, because every time when they win races, the, the, the craziest one is Hammond, because he's like, who, I'm, I'm, uh, at least I'm the one that beat your favorite driver. Really? Really? I was surprised because later on in the year, the beginning of this year, he had a phone call from his father, which kind of put the pin in the balloon a little bit because that was a little bit cocky. Yeah, he, he races perfect, but People don't like you, dude. You should understand. And then, then you go on your podcast saying shit that should not be said on the podcast. And it, I understand two runs don't make it right, but listen, from a guy that's from 30 something in the points, um, don't you think it's time for somebody different to be in the mask, Kersey? Listen, to me, it looks like some sort of Monster Jam encore, like went crazy or something. That's how I look at it. That's how I look at it all the time, all the time. Because to me, when I watch Monster Jam, you see the most wildest shit. One truck goes and do a backflip, and he try to does a, a constant consecutive, and it doesn't pan out well. But at least he try to put it down. But this race is like something I see like in Monster Jam, like drivers going head over heels. And listen, you got three races left in the playoffs. Don't you think it's some, somebody new should take it? Because every time you see all the races, it's always Logano, Larson, Hamlin, and it's like, it's, it's getting stale. It's just getting really stale. And it's like, you need somebody new on the table, in which case, who else would we call Austin Dillon? And I was like, Jesus, where did this guy come from? Under the radar from 30 something in the points. And then, like, the light clicked and he took off. I was like, damn. But what kind of made sense to me, the fact of the matter is, when you're those two drivers, Hamlin and Logano, you keep saying that you don't like being hit in the back. Don't you think you should have kept it to yourself? Like, it's not hard to keep it to yourself. It, it reminds me of some young drivers that don't like being hit. Embedded, they got hit in certain tracks they don't like being taken out from. But, I mean, it, it, listen, we're in a different, we're in a plot that people say this is more like entertainment. I couldn't agree more. 
something like you see at Monster Jam. Like you have two different drivers going up to the same one. They want it more bad. And it's all like, damn. Because like, what if the chances are that one of those drivers is gonna win and one of them is gonna come back with the trophy? I, I can't blame Austin Dillon because right now you're in a position that you need to win. Because if somebody tells you, oh, you should have slowed down a little bit more, I'm not slowing down for you for anything. I get that a lot even when I'm playing online, you know. I'm sick and tired of that. Oh, you should have waited until I passed the guy. I'm not waiting for you for crap. I'm going to win this race. I want to win up against that guy in front of you, not you. Because that guy right there, he's been stalemate. Because I could tell you right now. But to, besides all that happening... Um, there's a slight chance that Austin Dillon might be uh, retiring next season because um, let's just say it wasn't Kyle Busch's choice to be in RCR it was actually Austin Dillon's choice and our, uh, Richard Childress himself they wanted Kyle Busch I think what pushed Dillon was Kyle Busch be honest, because Kyle Bush is the type of guy he'll push you to the absolute limit to see if he can handle it. And look, Austin Dillon came out of his way, did his thing, then he won. Well, because the fact of the matter is, when you're racing up against 30 other animals, who's going to be the one? It's not going to be the guy that's going to be leading, because after the, after the fact that what you guys saw there, that was awesome. Austin Dillon put both of them in the spot, which to me, I think that's pretty well explanatory because I, I dislike both of them, Logano and Hammond, because they've been winning way too long and they're both crybabies and Dillon isn't because, you know, if you guys didn't know this, he's emotional because this could be his last, this could be his last win. Because next season, you never know. He, he might say it in the, in the beginning of the season, this could be my last season. Next season, in 2025, when we get there. Because um, the sponsor that he's got, the owner of Track House, um, Track House, Bash Pro, is, is, is just going bye-bye. And people are saying, well, you know, NASCAR should have never taken this route. People... You have to understand, we're in a situation that um, it's 50-50 hit, hit or miss because the sport right now, I, I'm not leaving NASCAR or Monster Jam because <laughs> what I just saw right now is something sort of like Monster Jam, don't you think? This NASCAR race at the end was like something you see at a Monster Jam. Drivers taking their frustrations out of other drivers and they want to win hardcore, and that's how you do it. What I would like to see if NASCAR could do it is get rid of the playoffs and go back to the old Winston Cup format. Don't do Hamlin's stupid basketball mad March Madness thing. That's not going to work. Because he should have never done that because I heard that in the playoffs, that the next year's playoffs, round of eight, people are pissed off at the fact that they put Talladega in the round of eight. I was like, oh, this is going to be good. And I said to myself, you know, Hammond made a mistake of making that round that match madness tree shit because, because that's one race that Hammond dislikes, especially in the round of eight. That's going to make things awesome. I'm telling you, it's going to make things gruesome. It's going to be like just watching Gladiator moving. Somebody's going to die. I'm telling you, it's going to be like this. When we get to next season's playoffs, it's going to be fight to the death. Because when you look at the playoff system for next season, it's going to be fight to the death. Just like in the movie Gladiator, Russell Crowe, it's going to be fight to the death. Whoever's going to make it to the final four wins. Because right there, that's fight to the, that's fight to the attrition. I like that. That was a good move. I don't care what other people have to say. I'm going for my opinion. I know my cousin's gonna flat out eat me alive, saying that's two wrongs don't make it right. I, I, I mean, I, 
right right now we're in a situation that two wrongs don't make right might not exist anymore because you know what, 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 what can you do like what you want me to back off and let the guy win no dude no that, that guy's got a history of wrecking people for no reason none so does Hamlin, because Hamlin got the same shit. Because, oh, you know, he blocked me. For what? So you just turn the guy? You, so you just turn Kyle Larson and say, oh, you know, I do what I have to do. I was like, dude, that, that's getting old real fast. And the whole thing about, oh, I beat your favorite driver was out of him, out of cockiness. He's a great driver, but he doesn't have what it takes. Neither can Mark, neither, neither can Madonna. He could win, but the problem is he likes going through people. So Austin Dillard did the same thing to him. What goes around, comes around. I know two, th- two wrongs don't make a right, but... Two wrongs don't make a right, two wrongs don't make a right but... The situation is winning a race and waiting for your opportunity, oh man, it's just on such thing as waiting. It's go big or go home. That's the bottom line, because I should 46 sets, so.